Hello students, this is Professor Frenetovich at Holyoke Community College, and today we are going to talk about cells. And in particular, we're gonna focus on plant cells. So as you know, organisms are made up of cells, and we have some organisms that are single-celled, like bacteria, some fungi, some protists, and then we have the multicellular organisms, and we see that with most fungi, plants and animals. Plants and animals are all multicellular, meaning they're made up of many cells. And many of our um, large plants that we have around us are macroscopic, very big, showy plants have um, many, many cells, thousands if not millions of cells. So we're going to look deep at what's inside a cell and the different parts of the cell. Now, when you start to look at this and look into the topic of cells, you might see different illustrations out there. And I encourage you to do a Google search of illustrations of, of cells. Just Google search cells, um, click on images, and you will see lots of different pictures. Now, uh, why do I want you to do that? Well, there are many different ways to interpret the cell. There are many different types of cells. So once you look at many different cells, you can see what's similar in all of them, what's different about them, and how they all are classified as a cell. This is just one of many pictures, and it shows a plant cell. Now, how do I know that? I know that because it's green, and it has certain features to it. Um, this cell is surrounded by this dark green cell wall, Okay. Now the cell wall naturally isn't that color, but because this is an artist's illustration, they drew it that color. The cell wall, we'll talk about it very soon. It's not technically a part of the cell, but it's something that's excreted by the cell to give that cell some structure. Um, I also have this big open space here, and this is a large central vacuole. This is a storage section for the cell. Plants have this, animals do not large central vacuole. There are some little things in here that we're not going to really focus on, the crystals. Um, we could ignore those. Another feature of this cell that gives it away as a plant cell are these chloroplasts. These are kind of cut in half, sort of, so you can see the inside, those little um, rough areas. Chloroplasts are important for a plant cell. They give the cell a greenish color, yes, but they function in photosynthesis. So that is key. So cell wall, central vacuole, and chloroplasts tell us that this is a plant cell. And then we have other things that we see in all types of eukaryotic cells, like a nucleus. Eukaryotic cell is defined by having enclosed DNA. So the DNA is located in here. There's a center part called a nucleolus that contains um, the subunits to make ribosomes, which are floating out in the cytoplasm and attached to this wavy structure called the endoplasmic reticulum. We have a Golgi apparatus, which modifies and packs proteins. And we have mitochondria, which some people call the powerhouse of the cell, but I want you to know this as the site of cellular respiration. We've got amyloplast starch grain. Um, and not to be, uh, not to ignore it, we have cytoplasm. Now this isn't an organelle. It's not an organelle, but it is the jelly-like substance that everything's floating around in. Okay, so it's aqueous, that means water-based. It's shown as green here, but it's not really green. There's no pigment to it. And then outside of the cytoplasm is the plasma membrane. It's just inside of the cell wall in this plant cell. And that's the outermost part of a cell. It encloses everything. So while plant cell has three major components that aren't found in other cells, the cell wall, the large central vacuole, and the chloroplasts, there are three things that are found in all cells, and that is the cell membrane, the cytoplasm, and genetic material. So no matter where you look, what kingdom you're in, you will see those three features. 
So let's look at things on the periphery first, and then we'll get into the center of the cell. I want to talk about the plasma membrane first. This picture is showing a plant cell sliced in half so we can see the inside. You might recognize some of those structures. This plasma membrane is this really thin layer pointed to right here, enclosing everything. Plasma membrane is the boundary of the living cell, closes everything, and just outside that is the cell wall. Now, the plasma membrane isn't just a flat sheet of one thing, it's multiple things. So this is taking apart the plasma membrane and looking at like one chunk. Cut it into a little sandwich and that's what we see. The plasma membrane is ca called a bilayer. It's a lipid bilayer with phospholipids. Phospholipids he lipid heads are shown here as these round circles and the tails are pointing towards each other. Here's another layer of heads. This should be reminiscent of our uh, chemistry video right here where a phospholipid is shown with its molecular structure, the fatty acid tails. This one is unsaturated, has a double bond. Here is the glycerol with a phosphate group. And this is how it's drawn simply in many books with a polar head, means it's attracted to water, and nonpolar tails, they repel water. And this is simply what the bilayer looks like with those nonpolar tails waving towards each other. So what we have is a layer of nonpolar substance, which acts as a barrier for water. It helps to regulate water inside and outside the cell. And the phospholipids make up about 75% of the plasma membrane, and the other 25% is made of proteins. There are proteins that form tunnels through the membrane, and there are proteins that are just on the outside. There are some proteins just on the inside. Some are these little squiggles that go all the way through. They have many different functions. This one, as you could probably imagine, is a tunnel that allows transport of small molecules back and forth through the membrane. There are some certain proteins called aquaporins, which specify just water. They only allow water to travel through them. Um, and other are less specific. Some of these proteins have little carbohydrates attached to them. That's these little chains. Uh, those to help, are to help the cell recognize other substances and for cell-to-cell -cell recognition. So plasma membranes control what substances enter and leave the cell and the membrane brown organelles of the cell. So there are membranes around all these organelles. So the nucleus is enclosed in a membrane that's very similar in structure to the plasma membrane. The chloroplast has membranes to it. The central vacuole, this is all enclosed in a phospholipid membrane. So that membrane is found kind of throughout the cell and helps to regulate transportation of substances. We call it semi-permeable, meaning it lets some things through and doesn't allow other things through. The cell wall is excreted from the cell and it's just outside the membrane. So in this picture in the top right hand corner, we see it as just a thick substance like a piece of cardboard. But when we look closely, of course, we see that there are details to it. Now there are primary cell walls and secondary cell walls found in plants. Primary cell walls of plants are fiber composites. Here is our plasma membrane. If you look closely, you can see those phospholipid tails and it's that it's a bilayer. And this is the primary cell wall filled with pectin. Pectin's making up most of it, that's a protein. And then we have fibers with cross links. Okay, cellulose fibers help to give this some structure and stability. Over here in the bottom right is an electron scanning micrograph of a plant cell wall. The middle lamella glues adjacent cells together. We're going to talk about the secondary cell wall in just a minute. But primary cell walls are on the outside. 
okay, the outermost part. And they don't just touch up against the next cell wall, but there is this substance in between called the middle lamella made of pectin. Um, all that pectin that you saw on the previous slide extends out into the middle lamella. Um, and this is sticky. We could actually um, get it just in its pure form and use it to make jellies and jams, pectin. It's important. And some fruits, if you do this in your kitchen, you might know you don't need to add any additional pectin because some plants have lots of pectin in them as well, like apples. Okay. Plasma desmata are these little tunnels that connect cells to each other. These are lined with plasma membranes and these to help a plant to communicate with cell-to-cell -cell communication and to exchange other types of molecules. So plasma desmata, really important for plant cells. The primary cell walls can be thick or thin. Calenchyma is a tissue whose cell walls have thick primary cell walls. Okay, so you will see this as we go in, in lab, possibly, and look at cells under the microscope or some additional pictures on our Moodle site. Parenchyma is tissue who has uh, tissue with cells that have thin primary cell walls. And while we're talking about cells here, cells make up a plant, but cells are organized into related cells that perform certain functions, like what we have here. These are next to each other and they're doing a similar function all together. They perform together. And so that's called a tissue. Cells are organized into tissues. So secondary cell walls made by many plants um, are on the inside of the cell. Here's a plasma desmata attaching two cells together. Here we've got a primary cell wall. Here's the middle lamella and the secondary cell wall. This is cytoplasm of one cell and this is cytoplasm of another cell. Um, and it's important to note that the secondary cell wall is inside uh, of the primary cell wall. This is important when we talk about cells in lab and when you do research on botany. Um, and it's kind of like analogous to the way wallpaper is. The second layer of wallpaper is more inside of a room. So the primary, the first wallpaper would be on the outside, kind of like the, that back layer. And then secondary wallpaper is closer into the room. I like that way of thinking about it. The secondary cell wall has layers, each with fibers running in a different direction. So this adds more support to the plant cell. And these uh, cell walls help to support the cell, but also the whole structure of the plant by being sort of rigid. Fibers contain lignin, another protein, as well as cellulose, a fiber, and hemicellulose. These fibers are actually carbohydrates, um, polysaccharide carbohydrates. So this is a good place for us to take a break and we'll talk about the other parts of the cell when we get back. So this is part one of cells, focusing on plant cells. <laughs>